is to make sure that you have to protect your eyes. Because if you don't protect your eyes, if you don't watch, if you keep watching movies, you keep looking at these magazines, keep watching stupid videos on the internet, you do all of that stuff, you're bringing Gehenom into your life. There's no way to avoid it. There's no way to avoid it. You watch, you know how they call, the Israelis call it, Shotef Tainaim. You wash your eyes with looking at other women, you're bringing Gehenom to your life. Even if you want to stop doing it yourself, it's going to happen to you at night. What you have to do is you have to start looking at the floor. You can't walk around looking at every, like, a, you know, one of these uh, puppets that, you know, shakes their head. You buy at the baseball games. You have to start watching your eyes. Yeah, it died again. It's okay. Uh, the phone's recording. Let's see how long that lasts. Satan doesn't want to see you online. This... Doing chua for something like this, this is something uh, that could save a lot of people. Doing chuva, you have to first start with watching your eyes. Second of all, you have, you have to start practicing not touching at all. Limit it as much as you can. I know, normally, it's tough for a guy and so on. You have to do whatever you can. Whatever you can. Especially if you're single. If you're married, Baruch Hashem, you have your wife. If you're single, if, I, if, you, if, if there was a way to not go to the bathroom, I tell you don't go to the bathroom. Because when you're single, it's almost impossible. The third thing is, if you're single, you have to find yourself a wife. Stop being one of these losers that's uh, 40 years old, still looking for the perfect woman. Find a wife, be a normal person, don't worry about it. You'll be, uh, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll develop love over time. I'm serious. There's a bunch of guys that I went to school with. They're in their 40s and 45. They're still looking for the perfect one. Where are they looking for? In clubs. <coughs> no, I couldn't find the perfect one. I thought I had it. When? 20 years ago. Okay, what about now? You're 45 years old. What are you waiting for? Find a woman, settle down, get a wife. That's it. She doesn't have to be... Uh, you know, the number one person on earth. Just find somebody, settle down, you'll develop love over time. If you guys have something in common, if you could tolerate each other, if you could have connection, you have chemistry, that's it. It doesn't have to be a uh, Marilyn Monroe and, uh, you know, and one of these other, I don't know, Brad Pitt or something. It's just normal people. Build a family, build a future. Just have something in common. That's it. It doesn't require this, this Shiduch crisis that we have today. It's all because we can't watch our eyes. The men can't stop looking at not immodest women, so they think that the tzaddikah that just came from Beit Yaakov is supposed to look like a, the prostitute he saw in the mall. And the woman, unfortunately, she, you know, some women are very materialistic. Why? Because they watch TV, they look at these magazines, they see that all these celebrities have this and that, so the guy's chasing money so he can keep up with the girl's expectations and they both drive each other crazy. Crazy. There shouldn't be a shidduch crisis. There's plenty of men. There's plenty of women. I have every single day someone asking me if I have a shidduch for them. How could it be? There's guys that want shidduch. There's girls that want shidduch. What, you can't meet each other? What's the problem? Find yourself a wife. If it's not because of anything else, it's to stop this sin. Stop this sin. I'm telling you, it's, it's such a horrendous sin. I had a lot of health problems. Anyone that wants to know my personal story, you can watch last night's you or it's online. Bezat Hashem will be online tonight. I know suffering. One thing I understand is suffering. I had many, many years of suffering. Pain and screaming and surgeries and pills. All types of wonderful suffering. Baruch Hashem. I know what suffering is. I'm an expert in suffering. You want to know what Gehenom looks like? I could tell you. In this world, not the other one. I know what it looks like. I know what suffering is. You don't want it. You don't want suffering. It's, it's, it's a nightmare. You got to get yourself a wife. It's number two. If you don't have a wife, get yourself a wife. Work on it. Work on it. it has to become, aside from learning Torah, it has to become number one. Number three, just as the Rambam says, only type of people that... Waste seed, spend their time on this stuff, are people that are empty-minded. 
They have no chokhmah. They have nothing in their head, so they're bored to death. And boredom leads to sin, like Shlomo Melech told us. Can't be bored. Can't find yourself bored. What do you got to do? You got to go learn Torah. Stop being a batlan, doing nothing with your life. Watching sports is boredom. Watching television is boredom. You can watch TV for nine hours and not even realize nine hours passed. Because your neshama went to sleep. Your body is just dead. Nothing happens. It's the shell, whether the guy died or he lived, whether the team won or not, it doesn't affect your life. You're just wasting your life. You got to spend time developing your neshama, developing your brain. Ariya Kadosh here says, you want to rectify all the seed that you wasted? You have to sweat for mitzvot. Because each drop of sweat that comes out of your body from a, due to a mitzvah is fixing one drop of seed that came out of your body. So in, in, uh, in uh, Simchat Torah, you should be the guy that runs around and sweats his eyes out with the Torah celebrating for the mitzvah. You're supposed to be happy. Run around, have a good time. If it's hot in the kolel, you should study even extra. Hot in the yeshiva, study extra. Sweat doing a mitzvah. Literally, sweat. Because each one of them is mamash helping you out. Most important thing is you have to learn difficult Torah. Learning nice tzipurit sadikim, listening to a nice story, yeah, it's fine, it's good, it's not bad. But for this sin, you have to, you have to choose your suffering. There's two types of suffering as far as this tshuva. It's either suffering by your choice or suffering that's not your choice. So it's either you force yourself to learn difficult gemara and pretty much to the point of ripping your hair out of your head and struggling at 1.30 in the morning instead of going to get uh, eight hours of sleep, you only got five because you struggle to learn some Torah. Or Hashem is going to give you different suffering. You don't want that suffering. You have to struggle. That's what Amal Bat Torah is. Im bechukotai telechu Orach Haim, one of his 42 pirushim says, Im bechukotai means Amal Bat Torah. Means difficult Torah, learn Torah. That's difficult, that's not easy. The Midrashim, it's nice. Sipuret Sadikim is nice. Little tape here, little CD there, it's all nice. But if it's easy for you, it's not going to fix the sin. It's good for Torah, but not enough if you have the sin, like every, pretty much every single person that's alive today. few things and I'll finish this is really more for the women than anything else every time the men look at women they're not really doing her any favors a woman walks around like a prostitute and doesn't want to wear any clothes or the clothes she does wear is like becoming like a second skin it's so tight that you can pretty much tell exactly what she looks like she has to understand that each time she walks around like this, the demons are following her. Why? Because she falls into this description. Mishnah, Pirkei Avot, 521, says, So whoever influences the masses to become meritorious, meaning to do tshuva, shall not be the cause of sin. Someone is doing zikuya rabim, organizing lectures, giving lectures, giving CDs out, publicizing Torah, trying to get people to do tshuva. Hashem is going to give them special protection. Hashem is going to help them in a big way if they're not making this major sin. Making this major sin, you're cutting your connection with Hashem. But one who influences the public, influences the masses to sin, will not be given the means to repent. 
a woman that walks around, a modest woman walks around, she doesn't realize that every single time she walks around, it's not really the problem that she walks around that way. God doesn't actually care whether you wear a tank top or you wear a tube top or you wear nothing or you wear modest clothes. It's not that God knows exactly what you look like. He created you. It's that every single step that you take is another guy looking at you and every single second that he looks at you is a sin. Every time he sins, you and him create a demon. And neither one of them ever leave. So a woman that goes from Avenue 15 to Avenue 20 thinks, oh, she looks cute with her new mini skirt. She doesn't realize just from Avenue 15 to Avenue 20 a thousand men looked at her. She just created a few thousand demons for herself and for them. Who wants that problem? We all have enough problems in our life. What do we need this for? She becomes a machtia rabim. She becomes one that makes the public, the masses sin. People don't understand. It's not about Hashem caring what your clothing, what your clothing style is or not. He cares about his children. And he cares about what his children look like and how they behave. This is why even Goim must be modest. Because if a Goya walks around immodest and she makes a Jew sin, Shem Elachem on us. It's a, it's a major problem. She has a major, major problem with Hashem. Hmm? Exactly. But it's even bigger when she's making one of his sons sin. So, for example, in the Torah, it mentions that anyone that makes a sin with an animal does bestiality, which in Hashem's eyes, by the way, is the same exact thing as homosexuality. That's why they're always together. They're always next to each other in the Torah. Homosexuality and bestiality, even though in this generation it seems like it's almost both of them are normal, but at least being a homosexual is accepted. You know, they even have parades for them. Uh, but in reality, in Hashem's eyes, it's not accepted. And He sees it as the same thing as being a man being with an animal, a woman being with an animal. And He says if a man makes a sin with an animal, or a woman makes a sin with an animal, you kill both of them. Now, okay, fine, you kill the guy, I understand, he's crazy, he doesn't deserve to live. What are you killing the animal for? What, the cow winked at him? Why, is he, why are you killing the animal for? What'd she do? Chazal says, because Hashem doesn't want to look at her and be reminded that for her, he had to kill one of his sons. Understand? So, Hashem Rechem on the woman that walks around, he modest, and Hashem knows that because of her, he has to send a bunch of his sons to concentration camps. So people don't understand how modesty is so important. We made a lot of sins throughout our generations. Hashem had mercy on us in every single generation. He had mercy on us. He almost destroyed us several times, but he had mercy on us. He loves us. We sinned with the golden calf. He had mercy on us. He gave us a warning. We sinned with the man, he gave us a warning. We complained, he gave us a warning. Idol worship gave us a warning. Before the Bet HaMikdash was destroyed, we got countless warnings. The second Bet HaMikdash, we got countless warnings. Before he punished us, we got countless warnings. Except once. Only one time in the entire Torah, only one time in the entire history, did we not get warnings. Parashat Balak. When Balak and Bilam tried to curse Am Israel, Bilam's curse did not work and turned into a blessing. So he told Balak, listen, I can't curse them because their God protects them. But if you want to beat them, send all your women there. Send all your immodest women over there. No kisui rosh, mini skirt, tight jeans. Send all of them over there. Why? Their God hates zima. What's zima? 
Shema is immodesty, prostitution. As soon as the women arrived, Am Yisrael sinned. And within a matter of minutes, Hashem started a plague without a warning. We're going to learn about it in a few weeks. In Parashat Shavua. In a matter of minutes, Hashem killed 24,000 of Am Yisrael. And it only stopped because Pinchas, the grandson of Aaron Cohen, took a spear and put it inside the two leaders, Zimri and with the leader of the women also. Uh, Salu. So here we see this punishment which is different. Even though idol worship seems really bad. It is. Chilu Shabbat, really bad. Complaining to Hashem, bad. Everything is bad. When we do anything that's against Hashem, it's bad. But in modesty, Hashem says, you're killing my children. Yemachti Rabim. And this is why you see today, Hashem Rachem, so many women getting so many dis- different diseases. Where are they getting these diseases? In the sex organs. Where is the number one cancer for both males and females today? In those exact areas, right? The areas for women, the areas for men. Private areas, where the, where the, where the disease is. Hashem is telling us, it's like, well, Hashem, Hashem is telling us, you have to act like Jews. Not, uh, not like the people of Sodom, not like the people of Noah. And that's why women have to work on their modesty, and they also have to work on their husbands. You have to make sure you do not allow your husband for one second to look at other women. It's never okay. Ever. Because you're protecting him. If he, if he starts doing it, children are going to do it. And that's the thing. It's just once a kid starts with it, Chazal says there's almost no way to do tshuva for wasting seed. Why? Because it's the biggest addiction there is. It's more addictive than, than crack. So much so that this, this Rav that wrote this medical book 190 years ago, Rabbi Avraham Sterren, said that even when he told the guy, listen, I cured you, now you made yourself worse. If you continue wasting seed, you're 100% going to die. One after another after another guy continued and continued until they killed himself. That's how addictive it is. So you have to overcome it. It's a big deal. It's a big deal in Hashem's eyes. And it's also a big deal in Hashem's eyes that you don't get men to do that. If a woman is responsible for a guy using that as an excuse for wasting seed, she's a partner in the crime. And that's the big thing that people need to understand. It's not Hashem. This is going to be a wake-up call for whoever can hear this shiur full length and actually get some Yirat Shemaim. Because the biggest compliment that Hashem gave to Avraham Avinu after the Akedah is now I know that you're scared of me. After he passed ten tests. Ten tests. He was just about to kill his own son for Hashem. Shem stops him. Says, no, no. Don't put your hand on him. Because now I know that you fear me. So fear, unlike what this generation thinks, is not only a good thing. It's a compliment. After Avraham Avinu died, he called Avraham my lover. But during his life, he called him and said the highest level of compliment he told him is that now I know you fear me. Fearing Hashem is the foundation, it's the beginning. You have no fear of Hashem. The shear is not even relevant to you. Nothing's going to help you. You have to develop fear of Hashem. Pay attention to Him. Notice Him. There's not Hashem. You believe in Him and you follow what He says. Any questions?
You have questions. I know as soon as the camera's off, so you guys have to have questions. Usually when the camera's on, no one asks any questions. Camera's off, it's 500 questions. Yesterday, I think I said questions. Nobody asked any questions. They shut off the camera. We stayed there till 2 o'clock in the morning. The, um... There's even more sources, but I think you guys get the point. Say, uh, on the girl side, you have to make sure that your husband knows this information so he doesn't ever think it's okay. You have to make sure that you're not the reason why anyone else is ever going to be a sinner. Not just your husband, but anyone else. For men, it all starts with keeping your eyes clean. And you start working on Yirat Shemaim. To get Yirat Shemaim, you have to learn stuff like this. You have to learn Gvara. You have to learn Musar. Regularly, every day. Not once a week is not enough. Even if you learn for 24 hours a day, one day a week, somehow, and the other six days you're not learning, it's not enough. It's better that you learn two hours a day than everything in one day. Every day, because your Neshama needs food every day. Not just once a week. You know, it's like if I told you, listen, don't eat every day, just eat once a week, but eat the whole day. Steaks, one steak after another. You won't survive. You need to eat every day. Yeah, there's a few teilim. There's a few teilim that uh, uh, that you can say. It's not necessarily a bracha. There's a few teilim that I'll, uh, if you want, text me and I'll send them to you that you can uh, say. To, to help you as far as protect your eyes. But the uh, the biggest thing, the biggest thing that you can do to help yourself with, with Brahma Brit is when you learn Torah, especially difficult Torah, your, your brain starts working differently. And just like the, uh, the Rambam says in a, uh, here actually, it's Yilchot uh, Yisurei Be'a, Perik 22. Alakha 21. Uh, when the same place that he said that only an empty brain makes this type of sin, in essence, he's also telling us that if you fill your brain with Torah, you're never going to be bored. If you're learning Torah every day, even if it's only an hour, two hours a day, your brain is always going to be functioning. Oh, you know what? Yesterday, Rashi said this, or, you know, your brain's always going to be working on that. If your brain's only working on business, on the material world, very easy to sin. But if your brain has some Torah in it, on a regular basis, it's going to function differently, and you're not going to think about that stuff. But obviously it requires some work. You have to do it every day. So Torah, especially difficult Torah, and obviously difficult, not just it's difficult and you never understand it, but difficult until you understand it. Um is the type of stuff that's going to fix your brain and neshama and get you away from seeing all of the stuff, thinking about it uh, in all ways. Um, second thing is obviously have a good relationship with your wife. If you're mean to your wife, then you can't blame her for not wanting to look at you. Uh, you know, some guys think that the wife is like a, uh, a slave or something. I don't know what happened to this world, but people treat their wife like they think it's a plant. They can move it wherever they want. You, know, you have to treat your wife like a human being. Uh, you have to take care of yourself. You can't expect her to be excited to be with you when you don't take a shower more than once a week. Uh, you know, you have to take care of yourself. Same thing with women. This is I'm telling you guys, this is, what, this, is, this is the type of stuff I hear. No, I don't want to be with him. Why? He smells. Okay, well, take a shower. Why can't you tell him? No, I feel bad telling him. Uh, who's going to tell him then? Who's going to tell him? Who's going to tell him? Tell him, listen, I, I refuse to be with you because you smell. Okay, so the guy's going to start taking showers ten times a day. He wants to be with his wife. This is the, if he's not going to be with his wife, he's going to sin. So the wife, thinking she's nice to him by not you know, hurting his feelings, being politically correct by not hurting his feelings, she's leading him to sin. Enough with the political correctness. Tell people with the truth. You could say it in a nice way. You could even say it in a funny way and joke around privately. But say the truth. Be, you know, be, just say what it is. Enough with this garbage is in the world with all this political correctness. No, I don't want to hurt the feelings. Why hurt the feelings? You're telling the guy something that's going to help him. Okay, so 
The surgery is going to hurt. I understand. But if we don't do the surgery, the guy's going to die. What are you going to do? I know it's going to hurt. The recovery is going to hurt. The surgery is going to hurt. Everything's going to hurt. But eventually he's going to live. So it's better that it hurt now and be better later than no later. So tell people the truth. The biggest thing that you can do for all overall connection to Hashem is take care of his children. In a woman's case, two major things. One, modesty. You have to be modest. There is no other option. You have to be modest. If a woman, if you're married, you have to cover your hair, not with a wig that reaches the floor. Kisui rosh, appropriate, look modest, don't drag it, you know, Grab the attention of the public. The only one that should see your beauty is your husband. The wigs of today are not kosher. Even the rabbis that say that the wigs are kosher or used to say that wigs are kosher are, would never say that the wigs of today are kosher. Because the wigs of today look better than natural hair. So it's nonsense. No one, no big rabbi in the world today agrees with today's wigs. No one. Even if you tell me, no, but his own wife wears it. Okay, he has his own problem. doesn't mean anything. Someone came to Rav Avadya and said, Rav Avadya spoke against wigs all the time. He says, there's no place in the Torah that says you're allowed to wear wigs. Whoever said it is making a mistake, you're not allowed to wear wigs. He said, yes, but Kvod uh, your own uh, granddaughter is wearing a wig. He's like, yes, there's a place for her in Gainom also. What about the fact that it's a layer of human hair? It's all a problem. The human hair part is because it comes from Avodah Zarah most of the time. There are different traditions in Tibet, in India, and in different places in Asia, that it's part of idol worship to uh, to uh, take off their hair. Idol worshippers. It's idol worshippers. Outright idol worshippers. Part of the tradition to cut off hair as part of idol worship. So women that wear wigs, in many cases, are using idol worship. But you're not allowed to benefit from idol worship in any way. Even if it's a gold statue, you're not allowed to benefit from it. Not allowed to use it, not allowed to sell it, not allowed to look at it. Nothing. So, of course, you're not allowed to wear it on your head. But aside from that, it's not modest. It doesn't meet the basic requirement. It's not, it's not modest. So, women need to understand, yes, I know this is a big tikkun in this generation. No one wants to cover their hair. Everyone wants to look pretty for, the, for, for Steve and Mikey at ShopRite. I understand. But your husband's more important and God is more important. Steve and Mike is gonna look, are going to look at... You know, some other uh, girl. They don't have to look at you. They, your husband should look at you. Yeah, that's it. Cover your hair. Cover your body. Your skirt needs to cover your knees after you sit down. Not before you sit down. Then as soon as you sit down, it goes up and becomes a mini skirt. That's not, that's not modesty. Skirt, ideally, should cover your ankles even. When you're sitting down. But even if it can't, the point is is that it needs to cover your knees at the very minimum when you sit down. But not like going like this every three seconds. You know, there's a lot of women. You go to like a wedding and it's like every two seconds they're all you know, doing sit-ups at the chair. That's not, that's not a... Uh, that's to cover it normally. And also, it's not supposed to be that tight. Why? Because if it's tight, then anyone with eyes can see exactly what your body looks like. It has to be loose. That's what modesty is like. That's what Hashem said. It's not me. It's, if it was up to me, I'm a guy. What do you think a guy would want? It's not. Before we did tshuva, I would tell my wife, don't wear any clothes. I had no concept. I was an animal. I'm telling you, this is what Hashem wants. Shirts have to cover the elbows at all times. Neckline needs to be covered. Obviously, you have to act like a human being. You can't talk like a truck driver. Speak like a lady. And guys, for heaven's sake, if, if you're wearing skinny jeans, stop it already. It's mamash, like, enough. And aside from that, Whoever you know wears it, tell him something. It's just not appropriate. It's not, it's, it doesn't look nice. I don't know who thinks it looks nice, but eh, whatever. I guess it's a taste situation. you got to stop it. 
I don't know. It's it's just it's just one of those things. Which, by the way, whoever doesn't know who actually made this style popular, it's not exactly the Mister Righteous made this style popular. It's a uh, guy named Lil Wayne. He's not the ideal Jew or anything. He's not uh, Yosef Tzadik. He's the one that actually made it really, really hip, and then obviously other superstars followed, and I think he eventually graduated to just wear women's pants because the men's pants weren't tight enough. I'm serious. So, if you're a nice Jewish boy that fears Hashem, wants to fulfill your purpose in the world, why are you using this guy as, a, as an example? Who wants to look like him, Bechlav? We're Jews, we're not goyim. We have to stop acting like them. They're not even supposed to act like that. But nonetheless, we have a higher we have a higher uh, responsibility. We're supposed to be a light to the nations. This is why anti, uh, Hashem uses anti-Semitism. Because with anti-Semitism that there is in the world, we still have huge, huge amount of assimilation. Huge amount of, anti, uh, of uh, intermarriage. Huge amount of Jews not keeping anything because they feel like Tommy and Joey are the same as them. Huge amount of people with no interest whatsoever in God. Huge. And it's funny because the Jews are supposed to be the most religious people. We find ourselves as the least religious people. So you have to tell each other something. You have to tell each other the truth. You got to do tshuva. And you, you build on top of it. There's always, tshuva is always available. It's always available. But you have to be serious. You have to be genuine. And with something like this, for guys, Gemara, learning tough stuff, that's the secret. Stopping it, obviously. And if you're single, get yourself together. Find yourself a wife. And Bezat Hashem, all of you, do very soon. Bauch Adonai Le'olam, Amen ve'Amen.